Just a quick note before I get started in this video. This is a follow on from the last video I did on the X1 motor running into overheating issues. And I want to state that this applies to a small number of Gen 1 motors from midway through the Gen 1 development cycle. Gen 2 motors do not have a jacketed rotor, so they should not fail in this particular way. So the rotor replacement has been completed and I now have three motor cores, all with the glue type of rotor. So I should no longer have any issues with the rotor hitting this data and I am free to go for a higher top RPM, perhaps with a 60 volt or a 66 volt battery, which would also lower the current draw and reduce the heat load on the motor. So this is the old rotor and you can quite clearly see the jacket top and bottom. If I spin it around, you can see that the source of the overheating is this crack in one of the magnets. You can see in this picture of the inside of the stator where the magnet has worn a track around. So what I think has been occurring is that the jacket has been crimped on during assembly, possibly putting stress on the magnets in the middle section. I don't see any glue, so the crimp at the end looks to be the sole method by which the magnets are attached. So I'm guessing that when it's been spinning, it's been getting hot for normal use and the magnets are expanding, possibly at a different rate to the jacket and further stressing them out. And eventually this is causing them to degrade and crack at which point contact is made with the stator. Although it's interesting to see light wear on the inside of the other motor core already. And this has never even been on a bike and only been bench tested. So it also suggests that there is just contact via maybe bowing of the magnets from the manufacturing stresses with the jackets and that there's light contact basically made until one of them breaks and then heavier contact is made. Um, I suspect that if maybe glue had been used and the jacket was simply like a safety backup, then this issue might have been avoided. So to remove the gearbox from the X1, there are essentially four bolts. The first one is here. And then once you've taken off the cover and removed the spring um, chain tensioner, then you're left with three bolts to remove one here, one here, and one here. And when you get them apart, you'll be able to see the inside of the gearbox, like in the next picture. So the glass plate in the back needs to be removed and that's held in place with four little bolts and two other larger bolts as well that hold the back plate on. The end cap was well seated with the bearing and it was quite tricky to remove. We actually ended up using flat headed screwdrivers and making a small tool to help pry it off with an old spanner. Putting the new rotor back in just requires the bearings to be put back into place and then it be seated in the end cap and then drop back in. Just watch your fingers when you do it because the pull from the magnets is very, very strong. I do have a few questions though um, that I can't quite figure out and perhaps someone on here can elaborate and um, perhaps CYC could have a look at it and tell me why as well because I know the exact moment when this magnet cracked. I felt it go when I was riding, although I did not know at the time that this is what had happened. So the damaged section is making contact with the stator and you can clearly see the track mark where it's doing so. Um, presumably the friction of this 
itself is generating quite a bit of heat. But why is this resulting in a higher RPM of the motor and a higher top speed in the same gear ratio as it was before? So like my 28T gear, the back was generating 42 kilometers an hour before the magnet crack and 45 kilometers an hour afterwards. I suppose it doesn't matter that much now it's replaced, um, but I'm wondering if the contact of the magnet with the stator is having maybe some kind of field weakening effect. So almost the contact is disrupting the field. And as we know, any weakening of the magnetic field generated in the stator would result in a higher top RPM. The field weakening is a feature of the ASI controllers and is employed in a controlled way to boost the top speed of the motor. So perhaps this contact is occurring in an uncontrolled way. Some other sort of anecdotal evidence to corroborate it comes from Backdoor itself. And I do apologize because I didn't take any screenshots, but I ran what's called the motor auto tune. This feature of the ASI controller performs rotational testing on the motor you have connected and gives you optimal parameter settings for your hall sensor mapping, etc. And before this issue, the rated RPM in Backdoor was 8373. But running it with this issue, it came out at just under 9,300. So this RPM game, like that I felt on the road, is being replicated within Backdoor. And this RPM increase is reflective of the roughly three kilometer an hour boost in speed as well. So any theories are welcome in the comments section. Uh, I must admit, I find this particular aspect of it pretty fascinating. Um, as for the bike, I'm gonna get everything cleaned and degreased for once and reassembled and we can see how it runs. Cheers.